So the second question is, what were the principles that guided the creation of the main institutions of the European Union? The Council, the Commission, the European Parliament and the European Court of Justice. Thank you. Uh, a whole range of principles and ideas uh, that were put into place, which led to a degree of compromises. And I think that's probably the best thing to start with when thinking about the institutional structure of the European Union. It's the outcome of compromises, of, of competing forces. Uh, and the major force uh, that has driven the European Union is this dynamic between what's called a supranational Europe, creating these institutions that have power above the state, authority above the state, and intergovernmentalism, which uh, tries to retain sovereignty powers for states. And these two, ten these two ideas do have a tension, uh, but if you can balance them in the institutions, then that tension can be actually very creative. And it's not a, a, a win, a loser, a zero-sum game. Uh, it can be a win-win game. So that's the underlying principle. But also, uh, to add some complexity to that, is the principle of large states and small states. There is no way that the European Union can be dominated just by the large states, whether that's two or four or six of them. There, you have to give real decision-making authority and power and influence to smaller states. Even Malta, size of Christchurch. Uh, but the majority of member states are below 10 million populations. Large states are an exception. So how do you balance their influence, size and population, GDP? That's another underlying principle of the institutions. And probably the last principle, <coughs> the one that's been actually the most problematic, is democracy. Yes, we have a European Parliament, uh, but its role historically has been quite mooted and citizens voting for the European Parliament has not been very enthusiastic. So the principle was to make an efficient political entity that could make decisions that obviously had democratic legitimacy, uh, but actually creating that democratic legitimacy um, has been quite a challenge. And that's probably the biggest threat to the European Union at the moment. It would be interesting to see the elections in 2014 this May, uh, whether that democratic legitimacy and consent is indeed given by European citizens.